I had some time off work over the holidays, and I was sitting around bored, wondering what else I could do in my smart home. I then remembered a conversation in the Home Automation Slack channel at work about the Xiaomi Bluetooth plant sensors, and I figured it might be fun to try them out. You see, I don't have the best track record with house plants, and I tend to forget to water them. So I thought I could use these sensors to trigger Home Assistant automations to alert me when my plants needed attention. These Xiaomi plant sensors are powered by a CR2032 battery and can be connected to Home Assistant via Bluetooth using the built-in Xiaomi BLE integration. They measure soil conductivity, which apparently tells you how nutrient-rich the soil is, light level, soil moisture level, and the ambient temperature. There's also a battery level entity, and these statistics are all recorded historically. Connecting them to Home Assistant is great, and you can use a couple of Home Assistant community store integrations to connect your sensors up to a global plant database, which will tell you the optimal ranges that these sensors should be reading for your specific type of plant. This way, you can make sure that your plant is always fed, watered, and lit to give it the best chance of it thriving. They were quite expensive to buy. I found a 10-pack of them on AliExpress for about £90, which I guess is cheaper than replacing my houseplants every few months. I now have these in all of my houseplants, and they've been working great. Let's take a look at how I set them up in Home Assistant. The sensors come in some pretty premium packaging, and are about 14cm tall and 3cm wide. They have two metal prong legs, which is what I assume it uses to measure the soil's moisture content and capacitance. At the top of it, it has a translucent window, is where I assume the light level sensor is. I cracked it open with the screwdriver and removed the little tab to let the battery connect. I then popped the lid back on and it was time to place it in the soil of my plant. The best place to put this is near the stem of the plant, as close to the root ball as possible, with about a centimetre or two clearance between the base of the housing and the soil. And that's it. It's now time to connect it up to Home Assistant. In a previous video, I set up Bermuda Bluetooth Presence Detection, which uses ESP devices running ESP Home Bluetooth proxies that sniff out the Bluetooth signals all over my house. Conveniently, this means that my house was set up for Home Assistant to receive signals from any Bluetooth smart devices I chose to buy in future. In fact, as soon as I set these proxies up, I noticed what I'm pretty sure are my neighbor's smart toothbrushes automatically appearing in Home Assistant, which is pretty weird and a bit worrying that Oral-B have set up absolutely no privacy-preserving security at all. Then again, neither have the manufacturers of these plant sensors, because they too were automatically detected in Home Assistant without me doing any sort of pairing. They just showed up, detected by the Xiaomi BLE integration, and I could click to configure them and add them to an area. The first thing I did was rename the device in the integration so I knew which plant it belonged to. Yes, my houseplants do all have human names. I then clicked on the device and renamed it again in this screen so that all of the entities would also be renamed. I don't really know why you need to rename devices in two places, it's just one of those Home Assistant quirks that I should have probably reported during the month of what the heck. I assume one day someone will make this better. That's the magic of the Home Assistant community. You now have the device configured in Home Assistant, and access to all the values for the various sensors. But, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, Home Assistant can be connected up to an open source plant database called Open Plant Book, which would tell Home Assistant what moisture, nutrient, and light levels each plant should have for optimum growth. The service is managed by a community of volunteers, and you can sign up to use it for free. This will give you an API key, which you'll need to note down as we're going to need it to connect up Home Assistant. I've linked to the site in the description below. And whilst you're down there, I'd really appreciate it if you could subscribe to the channel if you like this kind of nerdy video. Subscribing really helps my dopamine levels, so go on, click it. That's hot. Next up, we're going to install a few Home Assistant community integrations, which will let us connect our Bluetooth sensors and plant database together in Home Assistant to show the current and optimal sensor levels for each of our houseplants on these really cool custom dashboard cards. You'll need to have the Home Assistant Community Store, or HACS as it is known, set up on your Home Assistant server. 
This gives you access to these community integrations as well as many, many more. If you need help doing that, I've got a video on my channel which explains what it is and how to set it up, and it's also linked in the description below. Down there you'll also find links to the GitHub page for the Home Assistant Plant integration, which is what we're going to install next. Well, we're actually going to install a few different integrations, and the instructions that we're going to follow are listed out on that GitHub page. Firstly, we'll install the integration to connect up the Open Plant book, and then we'll install the custom dashboard card that I showed earlier. And finally, we'll install the Home Assistant plant integration itself. It's pretty convoluted, but you only thankfully have to do it once. Just follow the steps in these instructions and you'll get there eventually. I'll take you through them now so you can see what you're in for. To install the Open Plant Book integration, you'll visit its GitHub page, copy the URL of the page to your clipboard, and then flick over to your Home Assistant server and go to Hacks. Click the three dotted kebab menu in the top right hand corner and then click Custom Repositories. Paste the URL you copied for the Open Plant Book GitHub page into the box and choose Integration as the repository type from the drop down menu. Click Add and you should be able to search for the Open Plant Book integration in the list. Click on it, click to download, and install it. You'll now need to restart Home Assistant to load up that integration. Once Home Assistant has restarted, you can go to the Settings page, Devices and Services, and add the new integration. Click the Add Integration button, and search for the Open Plant Book integration you just installed. Click on it, and now you'll need to put in the details of the Open Plant Book API keys you made note of earlier. Your Home Assistant is now connected to the Open Plant database, and can be used to look up those optimal sensor values for each type of plant. The next thing we need to do is install that funky custom dashboard card, which is a very similar process. Go to the GitHub page for the dashboard card and copy out that URL. Now, go back to the hacks on your Home Assistant server, the three dotted kebab menu, and custom repositories. Once again, paste the URL for the dashboard card GitHub page into the box, but this time choose dashboard as the repository type. You should see the flower card available in the list when you search for it, and you can follow the same steps to install it. The last integration you need to install is the Home Assistant plant integration, which ties all of these things together. Follow the same steps again, copying the URL, pasting it into custom repositories, searching for the Home Assistant plant integration, clicking on it, downloading it, and restarting Home Assistant to load the integration that's newly installed. <sighs> Everything you need is now installed your sensor, your connection to the plant database, your custom dashboard card, and your plant integration to tie it all together. So let's add our first plant. In Home Assistant, go to the Settings page and click Devices and Services, and then Add Integration. Search for the Plant Monitor integration and click on it. Give your plant a name, preferably a human name, and tell the integration what species the plant is. Now, add all of the entities from that plant sensor into the right category, the temperature sensor, the soil moisture sensor, conductivity, light level, and if you have an air humidity sensor for that room or area, you can add it in as well. Hopefully your plant species found a match in the open database, and it will show you a picture of that type of plant, as well as the optimum values each of the sensors should be. If you're a horticulturalist and you know better, you can override these values and click submit to add the plant. Make sure you assign it to an area as well. I've added all of my houseplants to a separate plant dashboard, broken out by area. To add the fancy custom card, you can edit the dashboard and add the flower card we installed. Unfortunately, this card needs to be configured using the YAML editor. It has no UI of its own. What you'll need to do, though, is change the entity in the YAML to be the entity for the plant you just created. You'll need to specify the battery sensor for that plant monitor as well. And now you've got your fancy card configured, which shows you all of the sensors and whether or not the value is in the optimal range. I've taken this one step further and put a conditional card on my mobile dashboard that pops up when one of the values of any of my plants is out of the range. This conditional card is based on a template binary sensor helper entity that I created in Home Assistant. It's a problem based binary sensor that uses a template to check all of my plant entities. If it counts that more than one plant is set to a problem state, it turns this binary sensor on, which in turn shows the card up on my dashboard. I can tap on this card and it takes me to the plant dashboard that I created earlier, 
so I can see exactly what plant needs help and why it's complaining. Once I've sorted it out, the conditional card goes away again. This whole setup has actually been pretty useful, and has helped me remember when to do plant maintenance. But should I get some sort of smart watering device that automatically takes care of my plants via automation so I never need to do anything at all to look after them? Nah, where's the fun in that? I actually quite enjoy looking after my plants and gardening, and that's it for this video. If you found it interesting, informative, or in any way useful, please give it a thumbs up below to let me know. Have you got any plant sensors or gardening automations in your smart home? Share them in the comments below. I always love learning from you all and getting inspiration for my next projects. I don't really do sponsored content or accept money to promote smart home products. These plant sensors and almost everything else I've shown on my YouTube channel has been bought with my own money, and donations help me immensely with that. If you're feeling generous and want to support me and my YouTube content, I'd appreciate a donation via a super thanks or the PayPal link in the description below. Or you can subscribe to the channel for free, which means you'll know when I release future videos, and then together we can make your home smarter.